I don't talk to nobody anymore. Nobody talk to me. You fucked it up. My favorite TV series, you fucked it up. I'm going to eat my ice cream and I'll be happy. And I'm going to vent right now to you guys. So, Game of Thrones is uh, it's a joke now. And uh, what I thought would come to pass has come to pass. Danny went full Mad Queen. And I'm not, I'm not mad that Danny goes Mad Queen. They have been trying to set that up over previous uh, seasons, dropping small hints. But the way it's executed here in Episode 5 is absolutely fucking awful. Uh, th this show has really gone downhill without the book material. There's no doubt about that. Uh, you know, obviously people who just watch the show to be entertained, they don't see a problem with it. Um, and uh, and it's it really feels like D&D, &D, the writers of the show, are just rushing, rushing to the end. There's no reason there should be six episodes. If this was 10, 12, maybe two seasons, you could get the build up to sort of... Uh, get the um the full context of these character turns but the way they're working out right now it just feels like a switch is flipping in their heads and they're going mad and they're just like do and that's not just Daenerys it's other people too that are doing things way outside of what their character arcs have been uh Jamie's character arc is completely destroyed uh it's seven seasons of slow redemption building up arc very interesting and now oh never mind never mind you know, he goes back to uh, fucking Cersei and dies. Uh, just dies. There's the most unsatisfactory ending I could think of for Jamie's arc. Um, and then Cersei. My God. Cersei in this episode is just fucking crying the whole time, which makes no sense. She's like a badass, badass bitch. She a bad bitch. And I fucking love Cersei as a villain. And uh, but unfortunately, they die underground. Bunch of rocks crush them. So fuck the prophecy. Fuck, fuck the prophecy. What D and D? No, and there's no prophecy. There's rocks. Unless her younger brother was a rock. That's that's what happened there. Uh, just wholly unsatisfactory. All the characters, all the lives that she's affected, all the characters she's affected. None of them get to see her die. They don't even know she's fucking dead, probably, um, and get confirmation on that. I, I just can't believe that Jamie, I, this, uh, this is what pisses me off the most. I knew this. I, I had a feeling this was going to happen, that, that he wasn't lying to Brienne just to get Brienne not to follow him, but that he was being 100% fucking serious. He literally drove, fucking drove, fucking, I thought there was a car, a little toy car, but it was a toy boar with wheels. Uh, but anyway, he fucking rode all the way over to Winterfell just to fuck Brienne, right? Like, and, and pure fan service now that upon reflection is fucking disgusting. And then after fucking her, he's like, mm, no, I'm going to go back to Cersei. And then he goes back to fucking Cersei. And not, not in, not, it's, what? Seriously? I, Okay, maybe some people enjoy that ending or they want to see some of that stuff on screen, but this is ridiculous. Like, what, what, what? <sighs> like, Danny turning and the Mad Queen is fine, but the way it is, is she is destroying military targets. Everything is going fine. She motherfucking has. She's won. She's literally won. And all she has to do is just let her army mop up. Or go directly to the Red Keep and attack the Red Keep and everything would be fine. And for no fucking reason, other than bells ringing, she goes mad. It makes no sense. I, I Alex was with me and he was on the couch and he was like, you know, oh, that was because, you know, she was tortured when she was little and they were ringing bells. And I was like, really? He's like, no, I just made that up. So that it, it cause that's the only reason I can think of. And I was like, even that would have been better. It portrayed better or maybe if they had some secret scorpions <clears throat> hidden away somewhere and even though the bells are tolling Cersei's like fire and it hits you know it nearly hits Drogon or it hits him and it doesn't kill him and then she goes crazy and it's like let's fucking light this place up something like that would have been better other than and she's like fucking burns everything. It makes no fucking sense that the breaker of chains, this person who has a problem with the Lannisters, who has a problem with Cersei herself, 
is killing women and children and the people of King's Landing who she has no problem with. I understand her burning every single Lannister. If she wanted to destroy House Lannister, kill all the lords, even while they're surrendered, and all these other people, and Cersei, and all of House Lannister, fine. But there is no reason for Danny to directly target the civilians and burn them over and over and over and over and over, which, by the way, is the same thing that happens to Arya. Arya dies over and over. D and D have no idea how to fucking write this kind, this kind of character death fake out. It's so played out. It's so. It, it makes me so angry. I, I'm so. I, I. I'm like. I'm not upset that we're not getting a happy ending. That's not what this is about. Those idiots will, will say stuff like that and, and people who just really love the show and just want to be entertained and they don't understand why other people are upset with the way their characters are acting. And it is because the characters are acting ridiculous um, and we're not getting you know solid writing and payoffs. Uh, Varys betraying uh, Danny's I never agreed with. You know, he, uh, the, he betrays her so fucking quickly, you know, um, and... And they try to play this, and then I thought, okay, so Faris is going to fucking die next episode. Uh, but Tyrion's not going to sell him out. Tyrion, he, the only person who fucking saved Tyrion, Tyrion was going to die. And who, who saved him? Varys and Jamie. Got him out of King's Landing. He's like, oh, real, you know, friend. And he fucking sells him out. And he didn't even need to sell him out because Danny, you know, already knew that John had betrayed her, and because John betrayed her, then fucking Tyrion betrayed her, and then fucking Varys betrayed her, and it was just, it was fucking bullshit. And, uh, you know, and I would have liked it if Varys, like, I was like, how do they find out? I was arguing with uh, my buddies who were who were there before the show. How do we think, you know, Danny's finds out? And they were like, Tyrion tells her. I was like, no, that's fucking stupid. He is actually the one that lets her know. Uh, like he's being careless because he's been so smart for so many seasons. I thought he was being careless on purpose to test Danny to see if, you know, she would burn him. She's threatened to burn him multiple times. And if she burns him publicly and Tyrion's watching, John's watching, everybody watching, he can prove his point and be a martyr. And, and, and remember in the quote he says in the last episode when he's conspiring against her, he's like, at my own personal, uh, you know, loss, like I might die if, if I go and do this. And you have to be the one to make the right decision. So he's alluding that I won't be around Tyrion because, you know, I'm going to die and you're going to have to be the one. And I thought he would have a little bit of control over it. But no, I rat him out and, uh, you know, he dies. He, he's already writing letters, probably flying them to other houses to let people know, fuck, fuck Danny, uh, you got to you got to get uh, support John. So hopefully he's already done that. And see, I don't, I don't mind the, about his death, but then his death is kind of done poorly. You know, she blows fire on him. He doesn't make a fucking sound. He doesn't scream in agony to show, you know, the descent of Danny Snow. He just, there's no sound whatsoever. And Alex was like, oh, that's because, you know, Dragonfire kills people right away. And then five seconds later in the episode, everybody's screaming and dying to fire, making noise. So I guess Varys was just a fucking badass and didn't make any fucking noise while he was getting burned to death, which uh, makes no sense. But it's hilarious because in the last episode, it just shows goes to show you how bad the last episode was. Those scorpions got fucking nerfed hard, and Drogon got buffed like a fucking video game. Like, this is League of Legends, and, and the fucking scorpions first come out and fucking take out a dragon. There's like you know, five shots and three, and three of those five hit consecutively on Rhaegar and he's fucking dead even though you, it's incredibly difficult to hit them. And then in the very next episode, they, he, they have like a hundred ships firing scorpions and none of them can fucking hit Drogo. That makes no fucking sense. But it was cool as hell. If there's one thing I can say is the episode was well directed. Again, we got the director from the pre previous battle sequence, The Long Night. Uh, the explosions were really cool. The dirt flying everywhere. The rocks. The Golden Company getting fucking wrecked. Which, by the way, they did jack shit. Uh, that was a disappointing story. I, I thought the Iron Bank would factor in there that the Golden Company would turn on her at the last minute. But no, the dragon comes in from behind, blows everything up, and then the Unsullied wreck them with a charge while they're unprepared. Uh, and, the, and fucking a bunch of Dothraki come out of fucking nowhere... 
And then if you look at the end of the episode, there are so many Dothraki and Unsullied. It's like, it's like the long night never happened. It's like the, the Night King was a little fucking gnat and, and was just like a punk bitch. Uh, it barely hurt Daenerys. She's got so many magical forces that just appear out of nowhere. It's so frustrating. It's so fucking stupid. And uh, and it just goes to show you why I hate episode three a lot. And I hate this episode. Not because of these, these final turns, because a lot of these seeds were planted. But what I'm saying is the seeds are then blooming into the ugliest fucking flower I've ever seen in, in, a, in a very fast and unsatisfying way. With It's a bad analogy, but you know what I'm saying. It's, they shorten the season. They feel like they're rushing. They feel like they don't give a shit anymore, and they're making a bunch of mistakes. Fucking coffee cups and fucking episodes. Just fuck it. Let's go on to Star Wars. Let's go ruin Star Wars now, I guess, is what we're doing. Um, and I just, I just, I can't believe it. So I had to make a rant. I, I did film an ang uh, the angry review, the official review. Unfortunately, my camera turned off, so I can't use like half where I'm not in it and half where they're in it. So we're going to refilm tomorrow. Uh, by then, I will have slept on it and thought about it a little more, hopefully put my thoughts together in a, in a more coherent way, and we can give a final rating, but I'm just doing my angry rant now to get all this stuff out of the way so that I don't talk over Alex and Erica, because I know uh, in the filming that I did, I overpowered them, and I was just, you know, talking about how stupid the fucking bells were, and uh, I was just, I'm just, I'm shocked, I'm disappointed, um, I'm mad, and it sucks that one of my favorite shows, like, I don't give a shit what happens anymore. And it almost seemed, I think there was some leaks. The leaks look like they're true now because I had to go, I had to go and research and wanted to look this up because this is, I was like, this can't be what, what is really happening. What, <laughs> what is going on? But no, that's what's happening. It's hilarious. Jamie, Jamie is like trying to get in. And and he can't get in, so he goes around and he's in he he's like in, in an underground area where like this <laughs> it's on a fucking beach and it just so happened that that you know Urian jumped off his boat at the last minute before his fleet got destroyed by one fucking dragon uh which is now the most powerful thing in the universe again and it just so happens that they come onto the beach at the same time the same beach the same location and they fight and it's fucking stupid cuz i think Urian would be like you know peace out i fucked your wife or i fucked your your sister and your supposed girlfriend and stuff and uh, yeah, I lost, but whatever. And then he fucking rose away. He's like, fuck you. You know, but no, yet again, you're in the most powerful character fucking kills Jamie. Now wounds him. I don't understand. He's like fucking destroying him and like cutting him in the head and stuff, but he doesn't do that. He just stabs him and then lets Jamie continue walking around. And then he stares at the camera in the stupidest moment to say, I killed Jamie Lannister directly at us. Like he's breaking the fucking fourth wall. I expect nothing less taunting the fans uh because you know these are the these are the writers of wolverine's origins guys were the one what they fucked up with uh deadpool is one of the worst things ever i mean the good parts of the episode i i thought the acting was excellent Tyrion freeing jamie was a touching scene because it's like without Jamie, Tyrion would have been fucked from, you know, being born and being a little kid. Jamie was always looking out for him. So he's like, I got your back, bro. That was good. The Cleegan Bowl. I mean, we get the Cleegan Bowl, but here it's like, you know, it's like the only fan. It's like, it's almost like, okay, we want fan service. We'll do one thing and we'll do that one thing right and ignore everything else so we get a great Cleegan bowl by the way i fucking learn love how uh Kyburn fucking dies he's like uh you know you know cersei's running with the mountain and she's like stay near me because he sees the hound he's like i'm gonna kill my brother he's like you know stay near me and he's like he doesn't listen to her and Kyburn is like you must listen to your queen he grabs his fucking head smashes on a rock and just tosses him and his fucking back of his head fucking explodes like he was nothing so he got killed by his own creation that was cool the only part in the Cleegan Bull that sucked was when when Mountain knocked his fucking helmet off and he looks like shit you know there was actually one of, one of my buddies uh, who was watching it with me Keith said prior to the episode there were theories that maybe like his head was somebody else like they used parts of different people and shit like I don't know Ned Stark or John uh, not John, but Rob Stark or something like that. Something gross and interesting. But no, he looks fucking dumb. Uh, and 
and the mountain has to basically can't beat him uh, because he just cannot be killed. By the way, why didn't Kyburn just make a whole army of these fucking people that are these indestructible fucking monsters? Okay, but so fucking mountain has to charge at him through these conveniently placed bricks that fall apart, and so they fall off the tower together and they die. So the hound is dead. Right before he tells Arya to, you know, fuck off. Don't don't be like him. Even though it makes no sense because she's already like him. I mean, she killed the entire house of Walder Frey. Uh, she's probably a better killer than you are. So, uh, But I, he's just trying to prevent her from dying because he's like, I'm going to die. If you follow me, you're probably get, the mountain will kill you. Um, which, pff, with how overpowered Arya is, she would have killed the mountain single-handedly. She would have killed Cersei. So I'm glad Arya doesn't get to kill, you know, three more fucking people in the show. Um, and she's kind of useless this episode. They draw this really long fucking sequence with the with the, a fucking horse. It's like, what? Why are we spending so much time on this horse and running back and forth? I like the scenes where she's showing the chaos of what Danny is just doing, but you're just watching Danny and you're like, this, no, this just doesn't make any sense. Why is she doing all this and giving Cersei time to fucking run away? Think about that. She's like giving Cersei time to run away when all she cared about is killing Cersei who killed my Sunday. My Sunday, I dropped my Sunday. <laughs> I saw that meme. So now it's just funny memes. And I was like, I, 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 guys, you know, send me, send me Game of Thrones memes, please, memes. Mm, we got, we got some, some funny ones. Uh, we kind of forgot how to ride. <laughs> they were ringing the bells. Save right before the story one is <laughs> really good. Uh, MCU fans enjoying a satisfying ending, Game of Thrones fans. And we don't want a happy ending. We want a satisfying ending. Oh, my God. The bells are ringing, but you can't hear them. We did it, John. <laughs> we saved the city. It's fucking burning. This is funny. Jamie's entire arc. Whoa. This is worthless. <laughs> Varys fucking dying. Someone. You're a Game of Thrones fan? Me. I'm something else now. <laughs> Uh, there's the Sunday thing. Parents who name their daughters Khaleesi and Dan Aries. Yeah, that's that's funny. And then this one, there's there's people trying to defend this where it's like, oh, Danny burns this. Danny burns the House of Undyne. Danny burns Astapor. Danny crucifies the masters of the slaves. Danny burns noblemen who were dicks. But Danny burns this asshole. Danny burns her enemies, the wagons train. And then, oh, how could you be surprised? It, the thing is. Danny never fucking attacked the people. She if she if you fucking piss her off and you're a fucking slaver or you're a fucking asshole, or you're a fucking lord trying to kill her, she's going to obliterate you. But she's never turned her fucking guns and her dragons on women and children, literally children. It's, and just imagine Dan Danny's just flying around looking Drakar Drakar is just Fucking watching little little girls go up in flames, little boys, mothers, children. No, it makes no sense because she got pissed off there were bells. What is this, Broly and Goku? It, it, fucking Goku's crying all the time, and so Broly goes insane? Is that what Danny's is with bells? Never fucking have a bell next to Danny. I don't want to see cosplays of, a bell, of somebody walking around with a bell to bother Danny. You know? <laughs> It's just, oh, um, more memes. If the bells ring, that means they surrender. <laughs> yeah, no. No, I'm going to fucking kill him. Winner of the Nobel's Peace Prize. <laughs> That's a good one. I like, I like puns. And then, and just to show fucking these guys, she's not her father. She's not insane. She's not a sadist. Yeah, so that was a fucking line. You could tell every time we go into those after fucking episodes, like it's no longer about, oh, you know, how did they look at this or what insight can we grab from this? It's like, how the how do you explain this fucking shit? How do you explain your fucking selves, you pieces of shit? I saw people saying that and we we were like, I don't want to see it. And we're like, no, we want to see it. And we, and it's just and then the guys were all like, well, you know, Danny's is a, they talks about fucking Drogon pouring metal over the guy, her brother said, it's nothing to do with anything. And he's like, if all these little things didn't happen, then Danny wouldn't have gone crazy. Well, you pick one. Is she either, is she always been like this or is she not? And, and, <laughs> no, not like this. Not like this. Not like this. 
<laughs> and that's probably why Amelia Clark herself has said she's she's had problems with the way Danny has been portrayed in in the last two and you know in the ending and I don't blame her. I don't mind her going crazy, but just it, it could have been done better. So, uh, and I just think that these guys have really, really dropped the bar and dropped the ball <laughs> on this season. Um, uh, maybe one more to make me laugh. Who nerfed the scorpion, right? Drogon in the third episode and <laughs> Drogon in the fifth episode. And then this one's a good one. Tyrion, John is a Targaryen. Sends it. You're still talking with me. All right. He sent me more of those to make me feel better. That was my angry rant on Game of Thrones, episode five. We will do our traditional review, so uh, stay tuned for that, guys. And uh, and do me a solid. Uh, sign up to that Stardust app. I'll throw the link down below in there. It's free. Uh, I put up some angry reactions. So if you want to see the second I reacted to the episode afterwards, that's up in there. Um, give me a follow. That supports the show. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Here we go. Um, we got one episode left. And according to this, I, am, I have no expectations. I don't care. Um, uh, well, I'll talk about how I want it to end in the actual review that we film tomorrow, and I'll hopefully I'll have that up either by to to tomorrow night, Monday night, or or Tuesday morning. Okay, guys, but I want to throw this up right now uh, to vent with you guys who agree, and those of you who love the episode, come off it, man. You're free to like it. You don't need me to like it if you like it. So don't get mad at me if I don't like certain aspects of the show and I think it's kind of resolving in a really poor way because there's a lot of people that agree with me here and they're not fucking crazy. Even the actors are like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to uh, see you on the next. Angry Joe Show. Bye, guys. Oh, God damn it. Why didn't you tell me there was ice cream on my face?